Okay, so in this video, we are going to cover how to find the circumcenter, the centroid, the incenter, and the orthocenter. Given three vertices of a triangle, and we want to find the, for this number one problem, the circumcenter, the coordinates of that. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at what it looks like graphically. So we're going to plot these points. The first one, point A, is at one, one, two, three. There is point A. And then we've got point B at 5, 5. And then we have point C at 7, 5. So we can connect these. And that's the triangle that we have. And that's the triangle that we need to find the circumcenter for. Okay, so now that we've plotted the points, the circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So that's what we're looking for here, is where these perpendicular bisectors intersect. You can see on BC, that perpendicular bisector will cut this in half and be perpendicular. So that one's actually kind of easy, and we can draw that down, and we know that the perpendicular bisector to BC is going to be the equation x equals 6. So that is this equation, this vertical line right there. At x equals 6, that's the perpendicular bisector to BC. Now, you can find graphically, you could still do the other ones. You could do AB and find this slope and then make it perpendicular and see where it would cross. That's one way to do it graphically. So let's try doing that graphically and then we'll find out how we can do this algebraically. So graphically I need the slope from A to B. So we'll say step one, find the slope of AB and we want this to be perpendicular. So the slope of AB, remember the slope equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is going to end up being 5 minus 1 over, I'm sorry, 5 minus 3 over 5 minus 1. So this ends up being 5 minus 3, 5 minus 1, ends up being 2 over 4. So that's 1 half. So perpendicular to 1 half would be negative 2. So if we take a look at where that ends up being, this slope is up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Okay, so we'd end up here. Let me uh, use this tool. If you went up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, you would end up at point B. So we want the perpendicular. We found this to be negative 2. So that means it's going to go down this way. Now, I need the midpoint of AB as well. Since it bisects it, I need to know where that middle is. So we need midpoint of AB. And let's go ahead and find that. The midpoint is going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So for this problem, we will end up with 1 plus 5 over 2, comma, 3 plus 5 over 2. So these coordinates end up being at 3, comma, 4. So the midpoint is at 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there is the midpoint. Now, I can do this again graphically, and from this point, I can go apply this perpendicular slope. So I could go down 1, 2, over 1, down 1, 2, over 1, down 1, 2, over 1, until I cross this line. And I've done that. So let's look again. Down 2, over 1 down 1, 2, over 1, down 1, 2, over 1. It looks like it crosses right there. So that's the point of intersection. So this would be what this looks like. 
So we have this point right here at 6, negative 2 as being the circumcenter. Now, suppose you didn't have a nice grid to do it on graphically, so you would have to write the equation. So this would be step three. We're going to write the equation and look for the point of intersection of, <coughs> we'll call this point x, m to x, that segment. So we're going to use the midpoint, which is at 3, 4. So use midpoint and the perpendicular slope. So we have those values. This was the midpoint. This was the perpendicular slope. And we can just use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Put in our points. I'll finish this over here. This is going to end up being y minus 4 equals negative 2 x minus 3. Well, what x value do we use? Well, we already knew from this that x was 6 right here. We already knew that x was going to be 6, so I could plug this 6 directly into there and find what the value would be. So if I did that, I would get negative 2 times 6 minus 3. So this would end up being y, this would be 2, So this would be y minus 4 equals negative 2 times 3, and you would get y equals negative 2 out of that. So this becomes negative 6 plus the 4 gives me the negative 2. So there's your coordinate at 6, negative 2. All right, let's move on to number 2. And on number 2, they're asking us to find the centroid. The centroid is much easier to use the formula that we developed in class because we know that it's going to be a th one part of it will be one third and the other part will be two thirds. So the formula we came up with is x1 plus x2 plus x3, each of those coordinates, over 3, comma, y1 plus y2 plus y3 over 3. So we just plug in our values. So for this one, we end up with 3 plus negative 5 plus negative 1 over 3, comma, negative 2 plus 4 plus 8 over 3. So the values I used were straight from here. This was the first x, the second x, the third x, the first y, the second y, the third y. And adding this up and cleaning it all up, you end up with negative 1, comma, 3 and a third. So that is the coordinates of the centroid of this triangle. Okay, so now moving on to number three. Uh, number three, it's asking us to find the coordinates of the in center of the triangle given the following vertices. So let's go ahead and see if we could uh, plot these vertices and take a look at what's happening here. So on this first one, we have point A at 1, 5, so right there will be point A. Then we've got point B at negative 2, 1, point B. And we've got point C at 4, 1. So there are, there are the coordinates for A, B, and C. And so we've got this triangle in here. Now, for the in-center, what I would like you to do is go ahead and use constructions on this one. And the reason why I want you to use constructions on this one is for the in center, what we are looking for is where the angle bisectors intersect. Now, since we're looking at angle bisectors, I need to know what this angle is, say, right in here and I would need to bisect this angle, so cut it in half. Same thing with this one, cut it in half. But at this point in geometry, we have not learned how to 
how to find these angles without using a protractor. So we're not going to do that because it would, it would involve sine, cosine, tangent and finding out what that angle is. And there are other ways using distances, but for now we're just going to keep it in this process a little bit simple and we are going to use constructions as indicated here. So review how to how to construct angle bisectors. And I have a video on that, as you know. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to open up our compass, put a mark the mark the uh, tick mark through here, and then put it here so we'll get one here, then put it down over here, we'll get the other one crossing through here, and construct it like that. That's just a sample of what we're going to be doing. And so, um, if you were to do that to both angles, you will see that they end up intersecting at the point 1, 2.5. So they do intersect right there. And you could do it for, say, this angle and this angle, or you could do it for that angle. It doesn't matter. But once you construct the angle bisectors, they intersect at the point 1, 2.5. So that would be the coordinate there. Okay, moving on to the last problem. For the last problem, we're asked to find the orthocenter, and here are the vertices of the triangle. So let's go ahead and put these vertices on our grid. So the first one is negative 5, 4, so we can get a visual here of what is happening. Again, you can do this without having to plot these, but I want you to see what is happening, so we're going to construct, we're going to plot these points. So point B is at 2, negative 3, 1, 2, negative 3. And point C is at 1, 4. So this is point C. So basically, we've got this triangle we're looking at that looks like that. And then connect those two right there. So this one's a slight angle right here. So that's what we're looking at. OK, now, there's two ways to do it. The first thing, let's just do. Um, Let's find out what we're talking about when we say the orthocenter. The orthocenter, it's where the altitudes intersect. So here's an altitude. If I extend this line out right there from AC, that's an altitude right there. So this is the easiest one I can see of. And this altitude, the equation of altitude BC so to AC, to segment AC, this one is just x equals 2. That's the easiest one. OK, so now let's find another altitude. We can find a perpendicular. Well, let's, let's say if we wanted to do the one to AB right here somewhere. So it goes from this vertex and down. So that means if I were to draw this altitude, it would look something like that. I'm just sketching it in roughly. So that means this will intersect somewhere out over here, say. I'm just kind of guesstimating where it would be. But let's see if that's accurate. So first thing we need to do is find the slope of AB. So and use the perpendicular. So the slope of AB is going to be negative 3 minus 4 over 2 minus negative 5, which comes out to be negative 7 over 7, which is negative 1. So the perpendicular slope would be positive 1. Now, step 2. We need to use the perpendicular slope and vertex C, which is at 1, 4, to write the equation of the line. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. You can just go ahead and use this format. So over here, we're going to end up with y minus 4 equals our slope 1 times x minus 1. So that came out pretty good. Now, which value do I want to use? I want to go ahead and use this x equals 2 because I know that it's going to cross somewhere at 2 because the other altitude was 2. If, you, if this altitude over here, BC, wasn't so easy 
over here from B to C wasn't so easy to draw, well, then you would have to find the equation of this line, find the equation of that line, and set them up to find out where they would intersect, and you can do that through elimination or substitution. So let's go ahead and finish this problem. We're going to put in 2 right here, so y minus 4 equals 1 times 2 minus 1. So y equals, this is going to be 1, and then plus the 4, so y equals 5. So these intersect at the point 2, comma 5. And it pretty much looks like that point here from my rough sketch, so that's at 2, comma 5. So that's where the altitudes meet, and that's the orthocenter for this particular triangle. I hope that helped, and these questions, again, were, these weren't as bad because you were given this situation here where one of these equations was simple, easy to solve for, it was either vertical or horizontal. If this is a little bit harder, then the process is a little more difficult, because then at this point down here, you'll have two equations to solve for, for the x and y values. All right? Good luck.